Coach in. For the last two weeks in this corner of southwest India, the Volvo Ocean Race shore crews have worked around the clock to prepare our eight boats for another step into the unknown. Leg two was brutal. The 4,500 mile journey from Cape Town saw the fleet confront one of the most hostile stretches of water on the planet. Torben Grail's Ericsson 4 claiming a second successive victory led a weary pack across the finish line. The first time the Volvo Ocean Race has included a stopover in India. For Ken Reid on Puma, more disappointment. After finishing second on leg one, they crack the boat's structure on the way to India and can only finish fifth. Now is the time for Il Mostro to spread fear among the fleet. First time skipper Ian Walker saw his green dragon break its boom. His baptism of fire continues and he's getting desperate for some luck. Navigator Matt Gregory is now under serious pressure. Delta Lloyd is finding this race tough. His favored route to Cape Town proved disastrous and they pulled into Cochin towards the back of the fleet. Team Russia have endured an arduous journey to India, arriving last, two days after their nearest rival. Life at the extreme is testing the willpower of those on board. On Telefonica Black, veteran navigator Roger Nilsson takes a huge gamble on the run into Cochin and steals fourth place. A spectacular coup by the oldest man in the race. On Telefonica Blue, Bauer Becking knows his boat is expected to excel in the light winds on the way to Singapore. It's time to deliver. The bruises have healed and the damage has been repaired. Next stop, Singapore. Leg four will be up close and personal. Ericsson 4 continues to be the team to beat in the Volvo Ocean Race. Having scorched their way from Alicante to Cape Town and then leaving the fleet in their wake between Cape Town and Cochin. Leg 1 saw Torben Grail's crew shatter the world monohull record as they notched up almost 600 miles in a 24-hour period. Just got a 24 -hour record. The first to arrive in India, this well-prepared, big-budget crew is threatening to dominate the race. Yeah, we are feeling good about it, but uh, we keep our feet on the, on the ground and the results don't, don't reflect the reality of how hard the race is and uh, how strong the competition is. So it's important to keep uh, pushing hard and uh, keep, keep uh, working for good results. By winning the second leg, Torben Grail's Ericsson 4 extended their lead in the race to seven points. Behind them, just five and a half points stand between Bauer Becking's Telefonica Blue in second and Fernando Ecavari's Telefonica Black in sixth. With Ericsson 4 tightening their grip on the race, the pressure is starting to mount on the other seven teams. Telefonica Blue are desperate to gain any advantage on the next leg. So they're putting faith in this man, Tom Addis, a renowned weather expert. He'll be on board as the fleet heads to Singapore. With this leg being so, uh, so, so light and unstable, it's, it's not a leg which is driven by sort of big, strong features like fronts and things like that, that, that models predict really well. So the opportunity came up to sort of boost the, the sort of weather knowledge a bit. I was expecting to see you here. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good for us. We have a good leg, eh? So I'm looking forward to it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Nice and short and hot. A good home? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Little Tristan was born two days after I got home, so it's lucky timing in a way. If he was born on time, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to make it here. 
the weather package we get this time, every boat gets given exactly the same information. So, so the prize is, you know, working out, working out what to what to do with it all. Um, so we're just sort of going through what we're going to be provided with when you're out there and you, you can sort of pick, pick up the details and the subtle details much better, you know, you can, you can see subsidence happening and all the rest, which... So it's, um, you know, there's a lot that satellite images and all, uh, all the information available on the internet can't really help you with, so there's, there's always a good case for eyes just sort of pe people on the boat, really, especially in coastal areas like a lot of this race is going to be, so... Another significant change is on Green Dragon. With Ian Moore opting to spend Christmas time with his family, in comes the experienced Steve Hales to plot their way through unfamiliar surroundings. There's a possibility of everything from a pirate attack to getting hooked up in fishing nets and you know all of those things present new problems when you're in the open ocean, in the southern ocean and you know in the North Atlantic those problems don't exist so we talk about that as a team and we've got to make sure we've got plans in place to deal with that but in, in truth my thinking is that you know I try and block all those things out and just attack the race purely from the competitors, the race course, the tides and you know how we get the boat there as quickly as possible I think it would be you know not my decision to detour around something based on a safety or security problem. I'm not, I'm going to try and ignore those problems until, you know, they, something I really need to get involved with. Leg three will be a 2,000 mile race into the Indian Ocean and down the Malacca Straits to the finish line in Singapore. The winning crew is expected to be sipping champagne within 10 days. Race day. Thank you coaches. 60,000 people flood onto the dockside to wave goodbye to our eight crews. The end of an historic fortnight. The beginning of a new journey. It's really a very hard leg to predict. It's actually about four races in one and it could stop and, and start in several different areas. We just gotta keep the hammer down and kinda of let the chips fall. You can't go into a leg saying, we have to win this leg. This is too unpredictable to even imagine. It's a very variable forecast, but we have a lot of confidence in what we're gonna see. So uh, this is the conditions I grew up sailing in, light, shifty, variable. I'm all fired up. I can't wait to get this leg to start. Oh yeah, it's great. It's, uh, it's really nice. It's not often you get to sail with another navigator, so I'm actually really looking forward to it. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, it makes my life easier, which is all good. I don't know why it is, but we always want to get going. I think um, as, I guess it's because you plan so much for the start and you get ready for the start, so you just want to get on with it. It's a bit like taking an exam. You just when you get near the exam, you just want to just want to do the exam and get it done with. It. I hope the people are as nice as Singapore as they are here. That's all you can say. Matt Gregory on Delta Lloyd is a man desperate for success. By choosing the wrong path through the doldrums on the first leg, Delta Lloyd finished seventh. On leg two, they came home sixth. The navigator knows unless he gets them to Singapore quickly, his crew will begin to lose faith in him. We come down the coast. There are two marks that they're placing, uh, or you know, uh, virtual marks that we have to go around, and then we're free to go wherever we want through here. Essentially, it's going to be a east course up through the scoring gate is off this island off of the tip of Sumatra, uh, and then we go into the Malacca Strait. And it's about 500 miles, 600 miles, depending on about 600 miles from here, 500 from about here uh, down the strait. And our finish is right in this little bay here. The big threat there is if you get behind, the guys ahead could get the breeze first. I mean, obviously, you, do you guys remember the way it was on the way in too? So it could be the guys at back end up catching up, but I'd rather favor on being uh, in front of the guys than behind them, right? You know, it's important to arrive to the Malacca Strait with everything. Everything right, okay? I think it was very good the last leg for us, arriving at, 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 at the last moment with the boat for racing with nothing broken, and this leg for sure is really important. There is another race. From the gate to the finish, it's another completely race. With final preparations complete, the boats are towed to the start line.
all except Delta Lloyd. Tide's going quick, hey, huh? We need to get it hey, tail on as fast hey, as we can. Yeah, you get Put it on the winch bit, uh, Pete. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Everybody to lure it? Oh, yeah. Well, it's not marked on the chart, so uh, Matt thought we were in 10 metres of water. Obviously, we're in less than four and a half metres of water, and uh, I think the Russians might, might have just touched as well. Puma was smart enough to see us touching, so they quickly jibed, and uh, Ericsson just got away with it, I think, so. Pretty unlucky. It's just the fact of the matter that Kiel's all covered in mud now. We have to send a diver down, so we'll be sitting out there while the other boats will be sailing, treating up. You know, it all, yeah, it matters. It matters. Tightly grouped in just 10 knots of wind, Puma leads the fleet into the Indian Ocean. Destination, Singapore. fleet is on its way to Singapore. The departure from Cochin is made in light winds. On race leader Ericsson 4, an experienced crew is trying everything possible to make immediate gains. I was just plugging in the G1. How was that? Just in case there's a bit of pressure in this uh, rain cloud up ahead and we need to do a quick change off the zero. Struggling along with not much, very, not much wind with the masthead zero on, and now a little bit of a rain cloud's come through. We've got 15 knots of wind here, so we've gone to a smaller jib and uh, thinking about a bit of attack to make the most of the wind shift out of the cloud. It's on the radar, it's better to go straight, otherwise, you take yourself right up into it. Ken Reed and Puma, lying third overall, also play the waiting game outside Cochin. On Telefonica Blue, it's Tom Addis's big moment. Brought in to find a way through the light winds, he's called upon to locate the breeze. It's not bad, it always looks better to, on, on the bow here, so we're just trying to get to get south as quickly as we can and, and off we go. We're pulling bearing on the boats around us, so um, short term I think we're doing the right thing. It's just a, just a matter of getting the bow into the breeze first and uh, then we'll be off, but uh, yeah, it's the start of it, so hopefully it'll get easier from here. Cochin to Singapore. On leaving India, the fleet heads south in a tight pack. This is a new route to another new city and first-time skipper Ian Walker on Green Dragon opts to hug the Indian coastline. 
He's continuing his education at the wheel of a Volvo 70 in sailing's toughest race. It is pretty difficult driving this boat, I have to say. It's taken, taken me quite a while to get used to it. And if, one of the things, it varies a lot according to what sails you've got up. Right now we're on the masthead zero, so we're near the top end of the masthead zero. So we have much less, much less film on the helm. Um, so you see Damon here, he's working the main sheet for me. Trying to keep the boat on its toes as the wind lifts. Just trying to always balance off how high to the wind we sail against, how fast we're going. I mean, that's much the same as any other boat. It's pretty responsive all the time. It's just in the light winds where you can sometimes get a bit stuck. You know, it's a big old boat in light winds, so... Light airs, it can feel a bit mushy, but right now, with 10 knots and the boat's on its toes, we're sailing at about 11. It's good. The fastest we've gone for about two days, so I'm happy. You're always talking to the trimmers. Downwind, you're talking to the spinnaker trimmer a lot, working with them. But uh, upwind, certainly at the moment, we've got the heads all pinned in and really just talking to Damien, who's just adjusting the mainsail just so that we don't heal too much and uh, keeping an eye on the numbers. I mean, the key numbers we're both watching are the true wind angle and the apparent wind angle, which is the angle of the boat to the wind, and uh, referencing that with our speed and also the heading and course that we want to steer. We're pretty much on course right now, so there's no point in sailing higher than we need to. We've also got, uh, on the dials, we've also got the keel settings. Well, right now that's easy, that's all the way up. And um, our target speed, we have a target speed for every uh, every wind speed and angle, so, you know, if I'm, if I'm not doing a good job or the numbers are dropping, then it's up, to, it's up to the trimmers to give me a nudge and get me back on the pace. I've got my, uh, I've got my inshore stance here, which uh, the lads will laugh at me about. I think I'm supposed to stand like this when I'm sailing a Volvo boat, but I'm trying to learn that. On Telefonica Black, veteran navigator Roger Nilsson is leading his boat the wrong side of a waypoint, positioned to keep the fleet away from the Sri Lankan coastline. Is he about to go from hero to zero? We, are, we have to dive, look at this. We have to dive. Okay, you tell me, you tell me, it's your call, you are the navigator, I don't know. You want to dive, we dive. Okay, it's done by dive. because there is a current setting. All these boats burn. I don't care what we have to do. I don't care. Okay. Vamos a virar. Listo. A virar. Venga. Enrollamos primero, eh. Venga, ya. Venga, vamos enrollando. Venga, vamos. Uh, Alguien que dirija esto. Sí, y vos, Fernando, por favor. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? ¿Qué robó? ¿Cuántos en marcha? 160. ¿Cuántos en marcha? As Telefonica Black attempt to return to the mark, the lights of Puma's Il Mostro appear on the scene as they take advantage of their mistake. But I don't care that, Roger. Don't give, please just focus on this. We are going backwards. <laughs> We should keep a little bit away from the lines, we don't, because there is no reason to be closer than 200 meters away. Yeah, we are okay now. Yeah. No problem, really. This thing is obvious. Huh? Yeah, but I mean, it was. I was so confused yeah, so because yeah. the, the two boats in front of us yeah, went yeah, on this be, side, you know. Yeah. I think he was on the wrong side. I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah. Both the stern lights of the other two boats were above us, you know. And that was before we dived, they were on this side. Three yeah. boats in front but didn't pass the, the mark. They didn't see that, but when, when, we, uh, when, we, uh, when we came uh, on uh, this dive here, okay. when we came here, where did Tuma cross us? Where, where did she continue? You remember? When we, when we dived here, to go through this way. Where was Pune? She wasn't that far down. I mean, that's a long way. You know? No, Puma maybe was halfway. Uh, no, I think Puma could be in because he was more windward or fast when we were like this. But then he was our back. So probably he, he did it. Yeah. But 
just to send one email to the organization that we, are there, we, we feel that the, the boats which are in front of us didn't uh, pass the waypoints. Yeah. 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 Uh, they seem to be uh, north of the, yeah. on the waypoint. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not different to DPS, and, and the DPS could be like uh, you know, 60, 100 meters out. So that's possible. I have seen that. I don't know. I mean, we, we, I can send an email just and ask if, if they look at the tracks of the two boats ahead, if they actually pass out to the waypoint. That's all. Just, you know, I think we can do that. While Telefonica Black makes up lost ground, there are also concerns on board Ericsson 4. We've had to cut down on the rations a bit because we're going a bit slow, and uh, Yoka today has managed to turn seven days' food into nine days, which it's not quite on the same scale as Jesus, but he's pretty good all the same. I think we're going to eat well and um, see where it goes. I might even lose half a kilo here or there. Stranger things have happened. When does the half lunch start? Today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. No, good. <laughs> I'll finish my lunch then. Well, we've gone for half portions for lunch from now on in. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. That's not good. But uh, luckily we've got pretty big portions anyway, so we should survive. It's not for too long. But half lunches, well, well, we can live with that. It's not too bad. It's pre-Christmas. We can always fatten up over Christmas period. A week ago, and we find we find all the Kit Kats. Then we split them up between us, me and you. <laughs> so we have five and a half Kit Kats each, and we put them in our bag. Navigational and dietary issues apart, as on leg two, piracy is a major cause for anxiety, with numerous attacks in the area over the past few months. It's, maybe it's fishing boat. See a little fishing goat that way, and he's coming kind of in our direction. But far to tell what it is, but I'm sure we'll get closer and have a look. What's he doing? Pretty slow boat, but it's like maybe he's never seen a sailing boat before. Just a fishing boat, didn't expect anything else. Cigarettes. Friendly peeper. Very friendly, must be near Christmas. At the front of the fleet, it's tight. Ericsson 4, Puma and Telefonica Blue involved in a three-way scrap for the lead. Behind, the rest of the fleet follow in a line. Bringing up the rear, Matt Gregory and Delta Lloyd. On Telefonica Blue, weather expert Tom Addis is about to find out if his gamble of searching for the wind has paid off. You know, we built to 10 and 15 knots within five or 10 minutes or so. So uh, hopefully this will take us 200 miles to the corner and then, uh, then we put the thing on the wing. Yeah, yeah, the guys were bow forward on just about everyone. Green Dragon came through quite nicely. Um, they're probably the closest. Our black boat has also come through quite nicely. So yeah, we're, um, we're pretty happy with where we are. The stronger winds are very welcome. The fleet begins to chase hard. Telefonica Blue leads the race for Singapore, followed by Ericsson 4. 
Bauer Becking and his crew are taking a huge gamble by following the most southerly route. Torben Grail and his men on Ericsson 4 are in the north. If Becking's gamble pays off, they'll probably be first home. If it's a mistake, Ericsson 4 could well win their third consecutive leg and tighten their grip on the Volvo Ocean Race. The run into Singapore promises to be pulsating.